Loving Black History Month special podcast. Um, I'm Aimee Day. I'm Ayana. I'm Lene. I'm Dinafine. Thank you, Mr. Lumsden, for being here. And we hope that this interview is okay. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, I'm very excited. Thank you, girls. So, as a first to get started, tell us your story. How did you get to where you are now? Uh, as in a teacher? Yes. Um, so I was quite fortunate. I wanted to be a PE teacher from year 10. Um, I, I think it was just a combination of bad careers advice for when I was, when I was young in school. It was either a personal trainer or a PE teacher because I liked sport. I chose a PE teacher. I did my A-levels in college, then went to the University College Chichester, did my uh, undergrad and then I've been teaching since, so I've been teaching for um, about just over 20 years. Thank you for your shock. I think that implies I look younger than I am, so <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Is that it? Can I, can no. I, can I, can I need to continue? Okay, good. Okay, um... So, what, who is your black hero or someone who has inspired you? Straight in there. Good. Um, black hero. I would... It's a combination of lots of different people, if I'm honest. Like, sporting hero, I'd probably say someone like Ian Wright. Uh, I, supported Crystal Pal- I support Crystal Palace. Um, and when I first started becoming aware of football, he was one of the Crystal Palace heroes. So, he was always a legend for all black boys that I knew at the time, him and John Barnes. Um, I really am into the work of um, uh, what's his name? Alec Baldwin, who's an who's a, uh, author. Um, he wrote, I think it's called I Am Not Your Negro or something like that. It's really, really insightful. Uh, I like Malcolm X. Malcolm X, I, I think, was a very good um, role model for our youth today because he... Um, he not only changed the way other pe- other black people view themselves, he also changed his own view. So he um, went and made his pilgrimage to Mecca and came back and then uh, changed his way. So I respected that and I've got a lot of respect for him still. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Who's next? Oh, okay. What's your proudest moment growing up as a black person? I should have looked at these questions before. That's a really good question. Um, proudest moment... Um, I think it was graduating university. I think uh, I was the first one in my family too. Um, I went to a university in Chichester, so it was me and another Nigerian uh, in the whole year group who was a person of colour. And... Um, that was it was quite a big deal um, there was a lot of stereotypes there was a lot of inside jokes and there was a lot of opportunities to quit but I stuck with it for four years so that was a, that was a, a, a proud moment not just for me but all the people who came before me so my parents got to witness it uh, my sister was there um, so that that I, I, I am quite proud of it seems quite small because all of your teachers went to university but for me it was a big deal I understand that. Like, I'm the eldest in my family. I'm yeah. The oldest sibling. So everyone's like, you have to go to university, you have to do this, you have to do that. Mm. So it's like, what pressure? I'm like the only person pressure. in my family who's going to go to university. Uh, I see. Oh, I see. They're saying you should go because no one else has. Yeah, and that, there's pressure that comes with that. But there is also a sense of pride when you do it. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm sure as intelligent black females that you are, you know the statistics that um, people who look like us uh, are, are increasingly going to university, but we're not as well represented as other races, so or other ethnicities, I should say. So um, I think it's important that we work as hard as we can and get there if we, can, if we, if we want to and we feel it's good for us. So what are your views on Black History Month? For example, Kanye West made the quote, I make black history every day, I don't need a month. Do you support this view? Um, It's interesting. Um, I don't often support the great Kanye West, if I'm honest. I think he's a bit of a... 
How can I say? I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't often support what he says, if I'm honest. But I would say that I hear that view, and I know a lot of members of staff who share that sentiment, that we should be celebrating Black History throughout the months, it should be part of our curriculum, it should be um, something that's referred to throughout the year. However, until that's happening consistently, I do think we do need to dedicate a month where we can discuss, where we can reflect, where we can be grateful, where we can be angry at times, um, so we can come together and say that, you know, the, 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 the colour of my skin should not hold me back. Um, and it's an important message for us, for people of colour, but it's also an important message for, for uh, other, races, other ethnicities as well, so they're aware of the struggle. So, yeah, I think, I, think, I, I think it's important until we can guarantee that black history permeates through all aspects of our society... I think it's important that we dedicate one month to it, just like we dedicate some time to LGBTQ um, issues, just like we dedicate some time to other issues that are not featured in our curriculum so much uh, or not featured um, in our society as much. So, yeah, I think we should. I agree with that because if we have Black History Month all throughout the year, then it really takes away the history and what happened behind it and why mm. we need to, mu- to celebrate mm-hmm, it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it, it is in danger of them becoming white noise. Uh, you, yeah, sorry, to use the pun. But you know what I mean? It just becomes um, it just becomes something that's just said and not really meaningful. But, you know, starting with you guys leading um, line-ups, starting with the, the flag going up, with, with conversations and assemblies, you know, if we did that all the time, it would just it wouldn't have its power. So until we can we can guarantee it's happening, I, th- I agree with you. I think it should we should have that month. What is the biggest challenge you've faced on your journey? Sheesh. Um, I think school was quite tough. When I first came to school, we had two boys. Oh my gosh, what was his name? Chris Gordon and Darren. Can't remember his name. Now these was these were two. Uh, black boys in year 11 and I was in year 7 are we okay? Yes. you're looking at each other yeah. have I said something wrong? no no no, no. alright good you guys are in charge I don't yeah. want to mess it up no, alright cool um, yeah they were they, I was in year 7 and they were in year 11 and it was a, it was a section of black boys it was me my friend Lee and my friend Alex and that was it and and that we went to a neighbourhood which had a lot of, a lot of uh, white population and we were bullied. But because these guys were tough, no one messed with us for the first year. So it was cool. It was really good. No one went around starting trouble before you think that. But like, no one could say anything. But we were in year seven and they were in year 11. So the next year they left and left us by ourselves. And that's when the bullying came. That's when the Ku Klux Klan chants came. That's when the... Um, you know, being chased down the corridors came. That's when, you know, eggs got thrown um, because they'd left and they weren't there. And it wasn't an issue at the time. So that, I think, was, looking back now, was quite a big deal that I was able to just get my head down and keep learning, not react, because if I react, I get into as much trouble as them, but also just, just keep moving forward. That was quite, that was quite challenging um, growing up. What motivated you not to say something back? I mean, you couldn't, but you should Yeah, because I, I think if you do, then it, it's hard, like, a, a, oh, I always say this. Jay-Z's got a line, it says, uh, uh, a wise man told me don't argue with fools because people from a distance can't tell who is who. So if I argue, people looking on the out, on, from the outside, teachers, other stakeholders in the school, might say, he's the one at fault, i.e. me. Um, people might say I'm the one doing it so I just kept my head down where I, where I could I told a teacher and explained um, but if I rise to it then also I contribute to stereotypes of black males being aggressive or black males being argumentative or, or, or always wanting to fight or disruptive and I wasn't that so I didn't want to support that image I think it's great that from a young age you knew not to like make it seem as if you were the one to be mm. argumentative because a lot of people this age would be like, oh, if someone's bullying me, then I'm going to go straight for them, but you knew from... Yeah, yeah, and I think a lot of that does come from my parents. I think my parents gave me a a, a strong sense of confidence in in who I was, 
And I think when you're insecure, you have to prove how tough you are. If you're insecure, you have to... Yeah, we're still good. Uh, we have to prove um, that I'm the man. No one tells me nothing. If someone says something about my mum, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And actually, it's rubbish. There's no point in it. Yeah. Linking onto this question, what would you like to say to the next generation of black people? Um, I would say... I would say that let me give a moment to think about that I think it's important that we recognize ethnicity I think there is some people who think um, some people might say I'm colorblind I don't see this person as white or see this person as black but statistically we know that it does play a part if you are if you are you black females going for going for um, roles, there are some, some um, disadvantages or some challenges you may face, and me as a black male, I face them also. So it is important that we acknowledge it, but at the same time, it's important to realise that the sky is the limit. If we can have the most powerful position held, the, 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 the President of the United States be someone um, of African descent, then there's no excuse. So whilst we can say, I know I'm going to face challenges, we can't let that hold us back. We have to keep pushing. We have to keep saying, if so-and-so can do it, there's no reason I can't do it. If, 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 if this person from this background who speaks this way, whose hair looks this way, um, can do it, then there's no reason I can't. So I would give the... To, to, to recognise that you, you, you have differences, but that's something that makes you amazing and different and wonderful, um, but there's nothing that you cannot do and don't let anyone tell you that. Uh, what is an important part of black culture you would live to like to pass down? Um, I pass down everything to my kids. Unfortunately, they get bored of me saying stuff. But I, I think um, food, food is important. Yeah. Um, I think I think um, it's important that for every, and especially in our school, we have so, we have so many um, pupils who either came from other countries or their parents came from other countries. I think it's important to hold on to that culture to. That's what makes Britain so amazing, is that we have so many different cultures in London, in UK. So I think holding on to your sense of identity. I said food, but identity is what I meant. I'm just a bit hungry. <laughs> um, okay, on the topic of food, what yeah. would you say is your favourite food from your culture? Or, you know, like... um, I am always like... I'm quite a homebody, so I, my mum makes roti, and it's the best, um, and it's really good. And I and I I challenge anyone to have um, my mum's roti and um, either curry goat or chicken, and then um, tell me it's not good because it's wicked. It might, my daughter's a vegetarian, and she will still have some. It's that good. Wow. <laughs> it's serious. It's serious. Soul food. Soul food. Mm. Yeah. So that, that's always best. So that again? I think a mum's cooking is always best. Yes. Yeah. No My mum's is, is better than your mum's, though, oh. I'm afraid. <laughs> it is. I'm not going to lie to you. It's yeah. Amazing. It's true. It's true. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. I, I respect you guys, but you would go down in the kitchen. That's the way it is. Who's next? The Notting, Notting Hill Carnival is a big part of black history in the UK. Have mm. you been, and do you have a favourite moment or year? Yes, I've been. Um, I went as a youngster with my cousins. What's that? Youngster. Is that a big, is that strange, seeing me as young? <laughs> you know, very, like, oh, the word I said yeah, is yeah, strange. Yeah. Oh, as a, as a youth? Yeah. As a, yeah. As a younger, can I say no, that? No. Does that does not sound right? No, young is like someone that's your friend that is young, like way younger than you. Oh, okay. Thank, thank you for schooling me. Um, when I was about five or six, I went with my cousins. Didn't really understand what I was going on. It was a, it was, it was just a lot of walking around. I remember that I just yeah, wanted to go home. Energy for a five and six. It is, yeah. It's it. It's tough. And I didn't. I wasn't really into like music at that time, so it was just a bit. I wanted to go home and chill. <laughs> I, I went um, when I was much older. I was about. Uh, these are the ones I remember. I've been to quite a few. I went when I was about eighteen, nineteen, 
um, a group of us went, um, and it was just fun. It was just a, it was crowded, yeah. and it squished. These are pre-COVID times, obviously, but um, it was it was crowded. It was squished. The food was really expensive. Um, yeah, yeah, and I had a few friends. Actually, the thing is, you don't realize Mr. Lumsden is quite cool, mm-hmm. so I know a lot of people who like play music and do stuff like that. So that's quite cool when you like can know the DJ, mm-hmm. and it's like, or or if like you get a shout out from a DJ, that's yeah. really cool. So um, don't go, yeah, like you've had that. Done. You don't <laughs> even try. It. You're I nowhere do. near as as I cool as that. No, 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 no. So um, yeah, that's quite cool. That's my memories of, of being tired, being uh, things overpriced. But it, the the colour, you know, like when we do um, holy day. No, no. When holy day is one example, but when we all dress like our culture, what's that called? Diversity. Diversity day. Thank you. When we do diversity day, other than sports day, that's my favourite day, mm-hmm. purely because the visuals. Everyone's dressed up in different colours. Everyone just goes crazy. Like I went, I got annoyed, and six, if the sixth form is listening to this, I hope he feels shame now, because he was the only Jamaican student I knew who didn't have something uh, Jamaican on. It was when we had the inflatables last year, wasn't it? We had the yeah, inflatable, yeah. and he wasn't. And obviously, I told him off, and then I gave him some stuff to borrow. But that I really love. I do love people um, celebrating their culture, and it's just so colourful. So going back to carnival. I love carnival because of all the colours and people expressing holiday. themselves. Holiday. I love that. What's that? Holiday. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never been to one of those. They have them in Wembley as well. A lot of... Mm, sweaty. <laughs> no, how do you come home crusty? Yeah, exactly. You come oh, really? Crusty. You come home crusty. So you're walking around and people are throwing stuff on you. And the people are throwing water on you as well. So just you come Should you have to pay for this or just go? You just go. It's oh, okay. A thing, but you have to like, pay for this. Oh, okay. it, it's, strange con- truck, so it's quite a strange concept to go and people throw stuff at you. Like yeah. it's kind of it's a it punishment hurt. in medieval Britain. <laughs> yeah, like, but you know, you come home looking like a disco ball. So it's fine. Whatever floats your boat. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, okay, so what type of books do you read? Sheesh. Um, sometimes I cheat. I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I, I listen to books on my way to work. That's quite good because I can I can just lie back and get involved in it. So I like classics. So my favourite one of like uh, the last couple of years was um, it was it was oh flip it's about a guy, a guy oh my gosh he's terrible Dorian Dorian Gray Dorian Gray and he look he looks into a mirror and um, his sorry he has a painting of himself and the painting ages and he stays young and and beautiful. Um, and it's really good. It's quite. It's quite. It, it, it kind of. Uh, it's quite insightful on on the human spirit. But I like loads of books. I like autobiographies. Um, I like a lot of sport books. Um, yeah, exactly. I've got a lot of. Um, I used to go. I should have said this actually. I used to go to a Saturday school, um, which was just for black children, um, and they gave me a lot of black literature which is quite good because I get to pass that down to my children. Um, So that I used to love when I was growing up reading um, about black history. But now, I'm not going to lie, I read a lot of like books on education. That's so boring. They are really (laughs) boring. But they help me do my job. So, so, do you know what I mean? I have to read these different uh, ideas and theories about education and how we can get you rugrats to behave. I read, um, I read like... Uh, novels and stuff like that but a lot of it is classics at the moment books that I should have read when I was younger I'm going back to now and like what books that you should have read like um, things like Darwin things like classic texts that I don't I don't know I, I, I never did because I, I don't know how much I can say I had to move up to my top set I was in bottom sets throughout whole school yeah. And then by year 11, I'd moved up to top set. So when they were going through certain texts, I missed. Because I think the English show was last to come. It, was, it wasn't streamed, so I wasn't in top set for everything all at once. I moved up in different subjects bit by bit. 
So then when English, I think, was the last one, and I think I'd missed a lot of the classic text, so I'm trying to make up for time. I think you should try crime one, because crime novels are like interesting. It kind of feels like you're there in the book because you're the one that has to solve the mystery as well as the person you do as well. Okay, I will do that and exchange and compare notes with you later. On the topic of like issue, you should read The Hate You Give. Oh, that's uh, I know. The thing is, I saw the film. And once I, I see the film, the I don't like reading the book afterwards. I know. I the film is good. Good. Yeah. You should read the book. It's like more insightful. Yeah, but have, did you watch the film and then read the book? Or no, you read the book? I read first? the book. First. Are you teaching now, sir? No, no worries. Do your thing. I read the book first. I haven't seen the film. I refuse to read it because I feel like... Yeah, I think I should have done that. Maybe I'll do it. You um, because you get a lot more inside of her head rather than like just what's on the outside and taking it for face. Okay. See a lot more deception. I... What am I trying to read? I can't remember. Some spooky, some spooky book mm-hmm. about people murdering people in the house. What I will do is I will then... It's in the library as well, isn't it? It's in the school library. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'll get it. I'll get it. Mm-hmm. If I don't read it by the time, if by the time um, prom... I'll contribute to oh, your ticket. That's like, that's oh, that's like, yeah. oh no, I take ages when I read. I, t- I like to save for it, save for the moment. Okay. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not like. A, I'll read it in a day. No, 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 no. There's this one scene from The Hate You Give where the girl has like a hairbrush and she's like threatening a white girl um, because there's like the scene where um, her friend gets shot dead because he apparently he that's gets, right. Yeah, he gets yeah. you know with a gun but it's a hairbrush yeah um, do you think that was like a good representation of the yeah and like people who just assume that there's like something like in a black person's hand that could be a weapon yes yes unfortunately I do think that's a feature of our society statistics will show that um, if you're a black male you're more like I think it's like I'm not going to try and quote the stats now and get it wrong but there is a significant um, higher chance of being stopped and searched. There's a higher percentage of going to prison, um, and there's lots of things wrong with society. There's there's um, lots of injustices which cause that. But also there is an, an imbi- there is a bias when it comes to police. So well, have I been on on first hand of it? Yes, I have. I have I have been stopped. I have. Um, does it, does it, is it one of the reasons why probably I don't have a car now? Maybe. I mean, I like the environment. But I did used to get stopped a lot, which I didn't like, especially when I had a, friend, I had a BMW. Wow. Yeah, so, so I had, I had, a, I had, a, I had a, a, a horrible car to start off with, Jessica, called Jessica, and that was my first car. Mm-hmm. And then um, I had my sister's car, and then I went to, uh, oh, what was it, Car Giant. And I got a black BMW, and I just got stopped all the time. Oh, but such a nice yeah. 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 I think so. Yeah, and it was it was quite it was it got silly to a point. Like it was like I think you were swerving, and I wasn't swerving. Mm-hmm. I was mm-hmm. fine. So if I get a car, I will get a rubbish one because it's just not <laughs> worth. No, I'll get a good car, and I'll just make sure that I'll I'll, um, I'll prove exactly. them wrong exactly. Yeah, exactly. But until then, my Put oyster card is good. Back. Maybe, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Mr. Mumsy. Exactly, professional. Yeah. Um, are we done? No. Oh, good. One more question. Okay. Um, at Elvin, our values are integrity, community, courage, and mastery. Which resonates with you most and why? Um, I don't know. Probably because we've been talking about the topics we've been talking about. I think community... I mean, it is anyway, if I'm honest. I'm a team, I, I play team sports, I coach team sports, I teach team sports. Um, I think we are as a team. I think um, Miss Curtis had a really good training session before you guys came to school and our inset days, which is, and I know I'm going to get this wrong, but the pride of the lion. Shoot, I knew I was going to get it wrong. Someone help me out. The pride of the, the, the pride of the, I don't know what it is. I know what you're trying to say. Though. What is it? This is really annoying. Who is it by? Is it a book? No, 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 no. no. It's, a, it's, it's been slightly changed to fit our logo, which oh, is a lot. Like but it's just. The pride of the lion is the pride. The pride of the puck? No. Because <laughs> I'm the same one. It's like the pride of the lion is the, it's not pack. What pride. is the. No, pride of lions pride is a pride. Of, yeah, yeah. Oh, lion. yeah. 
Yeah, I think we made an outtake here. But uh, I can't remember what it is. But it, 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 I can't remember the words. But it's basically, together, we are, um, we're, we're, we're stronger because we all individually play our role. Do you know what I mean? So that's the beauty of our school, is that every... Like, like how many schools can you, can you say that, that we can have um, so many different people, different outlooks on life, and everyone is accepted? Maybe still haven't got it perfect yet, but I still love it. I still, I still love coming to... No, sorry, sir. I still love coming to school, in, in a school, where there's so many different people, and we all just get along... Like so many different schools I've gone to, I mean, this, you have to remember this is my, what, if including teacher practice, this is my like, sixth or seventh school I've worked at. So many different schools, you have a little area which is, which is just Af- African students. We have just over here, we have Jamaican students. Over here, we have Romanian students. Over here, we have the British students. And we still have some way to go there, if I'm honest. Mm-hmm. But it's so much better. Like, there, there's nothing to say. You can't be my friend. Your, your skin is lighter than me. You can't be my friend. Your hair is straighter than mine. It, it just doesn't exist like that. Um, so I love it. And it challenges, it's a challenge for me um, as part of the team that's going to help change and help and support that. But I think we're starting from a good place. I think we're, we're a good bunch of kids starting with you guys. Sorry to refer to you as kids, <laughs> as young adults. Um, but um, I think we've got a way to go. But I think... I think uh, We've got a lovely set. Of, we've got a lovely community in our school. I agree because I think we're still we still have some way to go because obviously the different groups like if you hang around in the courtyard. Yeah. But for example, in lessons, it's everyone interacts with everyone. No yeah. one's like left behind just because of how you look. Exactly, and and you're all friends. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're all friends. Like if if I was if I was a, a Romanian girl and I said, "Hey guys." You wouldn't say, "Hold on a second, are you Romanian?" You wouldn't do that. You would, you would say, "You'd say, okay, well, what's your story? Talk to me, okay, yeah. like that." Like it, it's not a big deal, and um, that's something we have to embrace more. Yeah. Like, there's an advert where this this guy comes up. It's a Rashford. He comes up to this group of youths. Mm-hmm. Can I say youths? <laughs> Fucking on my semantics here. But um, comes up to a group of youths and he says, um, he says, Wagwan. And he, does, he doesn't know what it means. Mm-hmm. And he said, it's okay to ask. It's okay yeah. to come oh, up and... Google is it, is it Google yeah. advert? I think it's, is it the white that the comes to yeah, the white Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he like high, fi- high, high fives. Can yeah. I say that? Like, yeah. yeah. Spud. Can I say spud? Yes, yeah, spud. I appreciate you. Um, yeah, so he can... He goes and he says, it's okay to ask. It's okay to... To interact, and uh, that I think is important, and we should do more. Mm-hmm. We should do more, and that's why I like I like that you know like uh, that we are Elvin or we speak Elvin during the diversity not the, the Inflatables Day and Diversity Day. Mm-hmm. There was a we speak Elvin because there's so many different languages, so many different cultures. We just need to come together and, and acknowledge it, appreciate it, and celebrate it. Yeah. Is that time up? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I wish we could do this all day. I really love this. I just get to talk about me. Honestly, <laughs> I love that. Um, okay, do we, who's going to sign us off? Thank you for listening to the Elvin Podcast Black History Month special. And we hope you tune in for next week. And thank you, Mr. Oh, thank you, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. I was about to say, you're getting rude here. Um, <laughs>